welcome to our service this morning. A special welcome is extended to all friends and visitors worshipping with us today. You are invited to Holy Communion. In Holy Communion, we receive the true body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. You are all invited to receive Holy Communion. The watchword for the second Sunday after Epiphany is taken from John chapter 1, verse 17. The law was given through Moses. Grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. Just one announcement. The Cancer Relay for Life will take place on the 18th of February um, under the revised format. It's not overnight anymore. It takes place from 2 o'clock in the afternoon to 10 o'clock at night. Um, if anybody would like more information, um, you can speak to the annual call and uh, it's going to be at Hands Club. Good morning also from me and a blessed year to all of you. I haven't seen most of you in this year, so it's good to be back. We had a wonderful uh, break, and but it's good to be back and to see all your faces again. Uh, I hope you survived the heat of the last couple of days. We barely survived it, but we are here. Let us celebrate this service in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and praise our Lord with words from Psalm 105. I will begin with the first line that I'll ask you to please respond with the bolded lines. Praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength, see his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations. Amen. Amen.
open our ears and our hearts, O oh God, that we might hear your word speaking to us in this moment. Open our ears and our hearts, O oh God, that we might listen for your voice calling to us through scripture. Open our ears and our hearts, O oh God, oh God, that we might understand your promises made to all your followers. Open our ears and our hearts, O oh God, that we may be filled with new life. The help of your Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. The Epistle reading for today is written in chapter 12 of the Letter to the Corinthians. Paul says, When I come to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I come to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on power of God. Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age, or of the rulers of this age, who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understand this, for if they had, they would not be crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. This is the word of the Lord.
Let us now turn towards God in a moment of silence and pray that He will open our hearts and our ears for His Word. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Please be seated. Dear congregation, we have just begun a new chapter in our life called, or in our journey called life. A chapter called the year 2023. Even if for some of us it might feel like it's already an old year, uh, we're still in the second week, so it's still pretty new. Even though not much has really changed since the end of the previous chapter, called the year 2022, yet at the beginning of each new year, it somehow feels like something new has begun. That somehow life's journey has turned a new page. And I believe that is a good thing. It reminds us that life is not just this long, monotonous journey that circles around eating, sleeping and working, but instead that life is actually an exciting journey, where every new day has the potential to surprise us, where each new year has the potential to maybe even change us, to bring us onto a new course and into a new land full of new possibilities. And that is exactly what the Israelites, God's people, experienced when they long ago turned a new page and started a new chapter. For many years they had been kept captive in the same country where their ancestors were once welcomed by one of their own, Joseph. Back then they were given land and they were allowed to practice their own rituals and live out their own religion, worshipping the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Over the years, however, as they grew in numbers and influence, the Egyptians began to perceive them as a threat to their establishment. And the result was that the Hebrews were enslaved and oppressed. And that is when they then cried out to God in despair, praying to be finally be liberated again. A cry that was heeded by God. Because God saw the injustice, God saw the pain and the oppression, and God decided to give His people what they needed most, freedom. And God promised them a land of milk and honey, where there will be only one King, only one Lord, one God who rules justly and with mercy. Finally. They would be free once again. Free from the oppressor, free from rulers and laws that kept them captive, that deprived them of their humanity. Yes, finally free. And so with great jubilation and much anticipation, the Hebrews, the Israelites, started this new chapter in their life's journey, together with God and God's appointed leader, Moses. However, as we know the story, how the story goes, soon afterwards, the excitement faded, and the jubilation turned into a constant grumbling. They were disappointed about this new life. Why? Because the freedom that God gave them wasn't quite what they had expected. They thought that from now on everything will be easier, that life with God would be a walk in the park. But instead, it turned out to be more like a walk through an endless desert. And even though God gave them everything they needed to live, fresh water streaming from a rock and enough manna and quails to satisfy them, still they wanted more, saying to Moses and Aaron, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted, 
But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. They were free. And yet, they longed to go back to their old lives. Where in times, they had more than what they needed, yes, for sure. But at what cost? At the cost of their freedom. Instead of living a life where they were accountable to God alone, they would rather go back to a life where they had to answer to some power-hungry king who determined their every move. Instead of living a life where they solely depended on God's care and love, they wanted to care for themselves because they thought that they could do a better job. And that reminds me a bit of myself, actually. I too want to follow God on my journey through life. I want this year 2023 to be a year in which I put my trust in God, in God alone, in which I allow God to guide and lead me. Yes, I want that. Because the truth is, I'm sick and tired of always living under this worldly yoke. A yoke made of material stuff and expectations that I most probably will never be able to fulfill. A yoke made of worries that weigh me down, injustices that make me sick and the fear of an uncertain future. A yoke that keeps me captive, that enslaves me and makes this journey called life often a bit unbearable. But then, just like the Israelites, I sometimes think that the journey to freedom should be an easy one. Especially with God at my side, I might even expect life to also suddenly become a walk in the park. A life filled with blessings, health and prosperity. A life that makes it easy to follow God. A life in which I am always content and filled with joy. A life where I can still do as I please, and where God gives me what I want. Dear congregation, but that is not the kind of life or the kind of freedom that the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has on offer. No, because the freedom that God, who through Jesus, came into this life of ours, so that he could join us on our life's journey. It's a kind of freedom where we are freed not only from the visible chains, but also from those invisible things that so often keep us captive, such as guilt, shame, bitterness, hatred, greed, selfishness, fear, and despair. A freedom solely built on love, on forgiveness, on mercy, faith, equality, justice, and loads of hope. The building blocks of true freedom and the foundation of a fulfilled life. A life to be found as we embark on a journey with God through the ups and downs of life. A journey that isn't always easy. A journey which at times may feel like you're going nowhere slowly. A journey that is, however, worth taking. Because on this journey with God on your side, you will learn to be more trusting. On this journey with God at your side, you will learn to be more loving and more forgiving. On this journey, you will learn again to see the little signs of hope, even though at first glance it may seem as if you are walking in circles through a lifeless desert. A journey during which you will still, from time to time, stumble and fall. But you will not stay there, because God will lift you up again, or will send people who will help you up again. On this journey you will still cry, but you will also be comforted by God's presence and by God's loving care. Yes, on this journey you will learn that there are 
are many things that are out of your control, like the future of your children, your health, and the life and the time left that you have here on earth. And that in these instances, it is best to simply let go and let God. Yes, on this journey with God, you will learn with the help of God many things, like being more grateful, more content, more hopeful, and more generous. A journey that will ultimately end in God's promised land, a land certainly worth journeying to, a land of milk and honey, of joy and eternal peace. Sounds good, doesn't it? However, just like the Israelites, I often question God's good intentions. And I often doubt the validity of this so-called promised land that awaits us. I question God's ways that often don't make sense to me. And hence, again and again, I fall back onto my own ways. I go my own path and plan my own journey through life. Yeah, just like those Israelites way back when, I also time and again turn my back on God. And because of this lack of trust and loyalty, which also had been common amongst the Israelites, Moses ends up going to God for help. In the hope of finally finding a solution to the fidelity amongst God's people, Moses says to the Lord in Exodus chapter 33, Now, Lord, show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will call, cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. I will pro proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand, and you will see my back, but my face you must not see. Here Moses seeks a sign from God that will once and for all convince the Israelites that God is for real. And that they can always trust God in every situation. Show me your glory, he says. But God says, no. You, you cannot see me in my full glory. You cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. God is just too big, too incomprehensible, too good for us humans to ever behold. And most probably, if we could stare into God's eyes, we would simply perish because in our own meager, because of our own meager reflection that would be revealed in the eyes of the one who sees everything, including our weakness, our selfishness, our hatred, our greed, our sinfulness. And that is why we can only ever see God's back and the footprints that God leaves behind for us to follow. God's footprints that remind us of God's goodness and speak of God's mercy and God's compassion towards you and me and all of God's children. Footprints that guided the Israelites through the desert to the land called Canaan. Footprints that show us the way, reveal to us the truth, and lead us towards life, eternal life. Footprints left for all to see on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Footprints that finally end up at the foot of the cross, where God's glory, God's mercy and compassion is revealed most clearly in Christ crucified. Jesus, 
the one who continues to invite us to follow him today, tomorrow, and each new day throughout this new year. Jesus, the Son of God, who invites us on a journey that will change our lives for the better and will take us as we walk through God through this new year, just another step closer to God's promised land that awaits us all at the end of our journey. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Fill us with your spirit so that we may keep our faith in you, 
Fill us with new strength and the courage to tackle the challenges that lie ahead of us. Lord, fill us with your power and help us to follow you on a journey where we may find peace and joy in you. Heavenly Father, empower us and enable us to impact your world. Be with those who have been touched by tragedy. Give them strength for each new day. Give to the leaders of our world the resolve to wage war not on people, but on poverty, on injustice, hunger, disease, and all manner of human suffering. Give them the vision to shape a new world where self-interest is overcome by love and compassion and a hunger for justice. And Lord, we pray, be with all the children that start a new year at school. Help them and their parents to cope with the many expectations that lie ahead. Be with the teachers and give them strength for their important work. And Lord, show all of us the truth that the life that we may find when we follow you into this new, new year. Lord, this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated for the last hymn, the love of Christ Jesus is urging us on.